Hi, I'm Monk and this is the Monk Way. Let's look at every single stock valuation ratio you need to know. Explain super simply so you can understand it all. We go from the price to earnings ratio to smaller numbers like the profit margin. Learning most of these ratios will let you value a stock like a pro. Subscribe, hit the bell, and leave a like for more investing videos. I make these every day. I just finished working on my stock market mastery course. This is a complete comprehensive guide on the stock markets, from the basics to long-term investing and short-term trading. This contains over 21 never-before-seen videos from me, in the style of whiteboard animation videos just like this. Check it out in the description or comments below. It's 50% off right now, but only for the first 100 customers. This video is a preview of what's inside the course, so if you found value in it, take a look below for the course link. All these numbers we are using to calculate these metrics come from the income statements and balance sheets. A company releases these numbers every 3 months in the earnings reports. We can find the most recent versions of these on Yahoo Finance in the financial section of your favorite stock. These ratios are also available on the statistics page. They are already calculated for you, but it's good to know how the math was done and what it all means. Let's start with the most commonly used ratio, the price to earnings ratio. First, what does this ratio tell us? The PE ratio tells us how much profits a company has made relative to the size of the company or the stock price. To calculate this ratio, let's look at all three parts. The first part is the price. If you use Apple as an example, the price of one share is $200. Then we have earnings. This means earnings per share. Since we're comparing the profits to only one share of the company, we want to divide the total profits into only one share as well. Apple made $60 billion of profits in total last year. But how much profits did one share of Apple make? We divide $60 billion by the total number of shares of Apple, $5 billion. This gives us the earnings per share of 12. An EPS of 12 means each share of Apple made $12 last year. Since there are 5 billion shares of Apple, each making $12, that's a total profit of $60 billion, which is what Apple made last year. The last part is the ratio, which means how much of one number is in the other. We divide $200 by $12, giving us a PE ratio of 16. This means the cost of Apple stock, $200, is 16 times more than the profits, which was $12. To think of PE ratio in a simple way, we can say this. For every $1 this company made, we're paying the PE ratio number. So for every $1 Apple made, we're paying $16. In other words, we're paying 16 times what they made in profits. Since $200 is 16 times more than $12. A PE ratio of 10 means a company costs 10 times as much as profits. This is 10% in profits a year, which is pretty fair. We want a company that makes more profits. So a lower PE ratio is a better deal. Comparing Apple to a similar company in Microsoft, Apple is 16, Microsoft is 28, so Apple made more profits. You can compare them to as many companies as you want in the same sector to get a good idea of a company's value. That was a bit complicated, but once you understand the basic concepts, most of these ratios are calculated the same way. Let's move on to the price to sales ratio, a very similar metric. The PS ratio tells us how much revenue a company is making relative to the size of the company. Revenue means cash they made before any costs are subtracted. For example, cost of making that money. To calculate this ratio, you can look at all three parts again. The price is the price of one share. Again, this is $200 for Apple. Sales means revenue per share, since we're comparing it to one share of Apple. This works the same way as PE ratio. We find the revenue for the past year, $265 billion, divided by the number of shares, $5 billion. This equals 53. So each share of Apple made $53 of revenue. The price of $200 divided by 53 is 3.8. Apple has a PS ratio of 3.8. This means for every $1 Apple made in revenue, we're paying $3.80. In other words, we're paying 3.8 times as much of the revenue. We want a company that makes more revenue, so our lower PS ratio is better. Comparing Apple to Microsoft, a very similar company, Apple is 3.8 and Microsoft is 8. This means Apple made more revenue than Microsoft, a better deal. The price to book ratio tells us how much money a company is worth if they were to sell everything relative to the size of the company. Let's look at three parts again. $200 for Apple stock, book means equity per one share of stock. And equity means money left after debts are paid off. So real worth the company has. Apple has $105 billion in equity. Divided by 5 billion shares, we get a book value of 21. Dividing 200 by 21, we get 9.5. This means for every $1 of worth Apple has, we pay $9.5. We're paying 9.5 times as much as they're worth. If Apple sold the whole company tomorrow and paid off the debts, shareholders would get paid $1 per $9.5 invested. This means if you own one share, you would get $21 back on a $200 share. We want more money in the company, so our lower PB ratio is better. A PB ratio of 1 means you would get 100% of our money back if the company were to fail and sell everything, which makes it very safe. Microsoft has a PB ratio of 10.3, so Apple is a bit safer here. Debt to equity ratio tells us about a company's debts relative to their equity. There's two parts to this. The first part is debts. This includes short-term and long-term debts. For Apple, this was $100 billion, so they have to pay back $100 billion they borrowed. Equity is money after debts are paid off. For Apple, this was $105 billion. Dividing $100 by $105 billion, we get 0.95. This means Apple's debts is 95% of their equity worth. We want a company with lower debts, so lower the better. Microsoft has a DE ratio of 0.91, so they have a bit less debts than Apple. A company like Facebook 
only has a 0.08D ratio. This is extremely low. Current ratio tells us that the company can pay off what they owe for the year. We get this by dividing their current assets by current liabilities, which is money they can access for the year and money they owe for the year. Apple has current assets of 130 billion and current liabilities of 117 billion. Dividing them, we get 1.11, so they can pay off their money owed for the year. We want a number over 1, 1.5 being better. Microsoft has a current ratio of 2.9, so they have a lot of current assets compared to Apple. Forward price to earnings ratio tells us possible future profits. Instead of using the earnings per share of the past 12 months, we calculate the forward PE with expected EPS. This is what analysts think the company's earnings would be. Apple's EPS is $12 per share right now. Their expected EPS is $13 per share, giving us a forward PE of 15. If analysts predict that it will be $20 per share in the future, the calculation is $200 divided by 20, giving us a 10 PE ratio. So if future profits are expected to be higher, the forward PE will be lower than the current PE. We want future profits to be higher, so we want a lower forward PE. Microsoft has a forward PE of 25, so Apple is expected to have more profits in the future. Analyst estimates are not facts, so this number is not 100% accurate. Price to earnings to growth ratio tells us about a company's profits and future growth, calculated by dividing the PE ratio by expected earnings growth over 5 years. Apple's PE ratio is 16. They're expected to increase the profits by 11% a year, giving us a peg ratio of 1.45. The better the expected growth rates and lower the PE ratio, the lower this number. We want more growth and higher profits, so we want a lower PEG ratio. Microsoft has a PEG ratio of 1.8, so Apple is expected to have better profit growth. Analyst estimates are not facts, so this number is also not very accurate. Return on assets tells us how much profits a company is making compared to how much assets they have. The efficiency of using these assets to make more money. Assets are anything that a company owns that's worth money, calculated by dividing profits by total assets. Apple made 60 billion last year, with 365 billion of total assets. We get a return on assets of 0.16, or 16%. This means Apple made 16% of the assets worth in profits. We want more profits being generated from the assets. So the higher this number, the better. Microsoft has an ROA of 10%. So Apple is more efficient at using their assets to generate profits. Return on equity tells us how much profits the company is making compared to how much equity they have. The efficiency of using equity to make more money. Calculated by dividing the profits by equity. Apple made 60 billion last year with 105 billion of equity. We get a return on equity of 0.57 or 55%. This means Apple made 55% of the equity worth in profits. We want more profits generated with equity, so the higher the better. Microsoft has an ROE of 40%, so Apple is more efficient at using the equity to generate those profits. Profit margin tells us how much of this company's revenue is profits, after cost of revenue is subtracted, calculated by dividing gross profits by revenue. Gross profits is money the company gets to keep from revenue. We get this by subtracting cost of revenue from revenue. Apple made 100 billion of gross profits, divided by the revenue of 265 billion. We get a profit margin of 0.38, or 38%. Apple kept 38% of their revenue as profits, not counting taxes, research, and other costs. We want a company that keeps more profits, so the higher the better. Microsoft has a profit margin of 28%, meaning Apple is more efficient at making profits. Operating margin tells us how much profit a company is taking in after cost of revenue, research development, and selling general and administrative is taken out, so most costs and research are subtracted, calculated by dividing operating income or loss by revenue. Apple made 70 billion of operating income, 265 billion of revenue. We get an operating margin of 0.26, or 26%. This means Apple kept 26% of their revenue as profits, before taxes. We want a company that keeps more profits, so higher the better. Microsoft has an operating margin of 33%. This means Microsoft is keeping more profits. To summarize, price to earnings ratio tells us about the profits a company makes. The market average is 22, so under 22 is more of a value right now. Price to sales ratio tells us about revenue. The market average is 2.1, so under 2.1 is more of a value. Price to book ratio tells us about a company's worth if they sell everything. The market average is 3.4. Debt to equity ratio tells us about a company's debts, under 0.5 being low debts. Currents ratio tells us if the company can pay off what they owe for the year, over 1.5 being safer. Forward PE ratio tells us about estimated future profits. The market average is 17, so under that is a value. Price to earnings to growth ratio tells us about growth rates, under 1 is a good deal. Return on assets tells us about profits in relation to the company's assets. Over 5% is better, but compare this to the sector. Return on equity tells us about profits in relation to a company's equity. Over 15% being better, but again, compare this to the sector. Profit margin tells us how much money a company is keeping from the revenue after cost of revenue. Compare this to the sector. Operating margin tells us about the money a company is keeping after cost, research, and administrative costs are subtracted. Also compare this to the sector. This is everything you need to value a company. Compare these numbers to a company's competition to see which is better. Use companies of the same sector. For example, Walmart compared to Target, or Apple compared to Microsoft's. You should also read their income statements and balance sheet for the last 10 years to see if they have good growth over that time. This will give you a good understanding of the company's numbers. This was just a taste of the type of videos in my course, Monk's Market Mastery, where I teach you everything there is to know about the markets. We start with the basics, moving on to valuation, long-term investing, and then short-term trading. 
If you're new to the markets, or just want to learn a lot more, this course contains right board animation videos just like this video, teaching you while entertaining you. Check it out in the description or comments below. I'm offering 50% off for the first 100 buyers. Don't miss your chance. Subscribe, hit the bell, and leave a like for more investing videos. I make these every day. Keep watching the value the best stocks, monthly.